why are we here? Why are we here? And why are we here? Why are we here in Stratford? Stratford's the birthplace and lifetime home of Senator Justin Smith Morrill, a self-educated and as much a self-made man within a village as anyone could be. He was the lead author and namesake of the Morrill Land Grant College Act of 1862. Addressing higher education, one of the greatest barriers to mobility of the classes, Morrill tackled one of the greatest social injustice one of the greatest social justice issues of the 19th century. Many credit his act with propelling America to leadership in the world through a broadly educated populace. Stratford is also the longtime retirement home of the Reverend William Sloan Coffin. Bill was a tireless servant for equality. While many know his work on the civil rights movement of the 1960s with Dr. King, I will forever remember and remain forever changed by witnessing his work on civil rights in Vermont in the first part of this century. His simple statements of admission, recovery, and penitence, spoken aloud from a man who I know had great faith and had seen so much, has given me strength to speak out on civil rights and equality for all. Vermont and America are both stronger for it. Stratford does that to you. We're also here in a place which was decrepit, uncared for, and neglected a place abused by people who did not care and respect, who took more than they gave, but also a place where people came together, saw a need for preservation, both at the physical level and the philosophical, and I dare say even moral level. And they shepherded the creation back to a thing of beauty which our children will surely enjoy. Of course, I'm speaking of this building. We are in now, the Stratford Townhouse, now 214 years old, it was once sorely declining state, decrepit, and is now fit for future centuries due to the care and respect shown it. Please join Stratford in our respect for this facility. Stratford welcomes you. Why are we here today, today, together? The answer is short and long, simple and complex. The short answer is that Pastor Byron Breeze and I were talking about climate change and he said, we should hold a conference. And I said, okay. I said no first three times. <laughs> um, sometimes I persevere and sometimes I don't. The long answer is that I've been working on climate issues since the turn of the millennium. And about a year ago, I took a break, stepped away from the solar company I'd founded and run for 14 years, and had a chance to reflect and connect. And as time passed, I made a lot of outward connections and then started making some inward connections. Funny thing, which many of you know, is that the inward connections explained a lot of what happened inside and outside of me. It occurred to Byron and me at that dining room table that climate disruption was not the problem. The problem was social injustice caused by climate disruption. We care about our kids, and we see that social injustice is escalating in the world and will affect our children orders of magnitude more than it has affected us. And Byron's deep faith, and my growing faith, called out to us and said, stop the social injustice. And I suddenly realized, that's what I've been working on for 40 years. Without ever stating it clearly, 40 years. And I didn't know what I was doing until February. But then we realized it was not just about us. We realized that all faiths, all spiritual practices work to fight social injustice, especially when against children because all people of faith and spirituality protect their children because they are the future of the faith. And then we realized how interwoven, how entangled faith, children, and climate disruption are. And we knew we had to work on that connection. This is not the first symposium on the connection between climate disruption and faith. However, we believe this is the first symposium on the connection between climate disruption, increasing social injustice in the world, especially for our children, and faith. The distinction is important. Much has been written about care for the creation based on interpretation of holy writings. We are not here to debate theology. And if we were, I would not be standing in front of you. The connection between climate disruption and increasing social injustice is clear, increasingly clear. Hurricanes destroy equally, but more highly impact those least able to rebuild. Drought affects farmers and hits all of us in the pocketbook. 
but those who spend 85% of their income on food are hit hardest. These are just two simple examples of how climate disruption, disruption increases social injustice. There are many more examples, many more complex examples. We are here to consider these impacts, and we are here to search for how our individual faiths and or spiritual practices require us to respond. Because a need to work for social justice, a need to provide a just future for our children, is at the core of every faith and all spirituality I have ever heard of. So how does this exhibit, how does this exhibit itself? How does each of us personify this fundamental truth? What action does our faith or spirituality lead us to take? We are here in Stratford today and tomorrow to explore our motivations for caring about social justice, to explore our spiritual and faith-based connections to action for social justice, to gain understanding of the connections between climate disruption and social justice, and to figure out what we, as people of faith and spirituality, must do when faced with what we are faced with. Welcome to Stratford, a place of faithful and spiritually driven action. So that's why we are here in Stratford. And I believe we're here on Earth, and this is just my belief, to enjoy creation. And what a joyous day we have outside. What beautiful weather. Um, how, how perfect it could be, like a sign to have a good symposium. And, and why, would, why would my Lord have made such a beautiful place if it was not to enjoy it? And how can I not work with all my being to have this place be enjoyable for my children? That is why I believe I'm here on earth. So that's why we're here in Stratford. That's why we're here together. And my theory of why we're here on earth. I welcome each of you to hear, to hear, and to hear and invite you to participate with your entire spiritual being over the next two days to understand the social justice issues created by climate, to understand why faith and faith groups have a historical role in fighting for social justice, and to create the messaging and the priority for action required for each of us to fulfill our role in this fight. Our two days here will be organized in what we call a narrative. The narrative will help to guide us as we consider how climate disruption creates social injustice, and then as we consider what our role as faithful and spiritual beings is in working against it. We will also study how our faith gives us the hope we need against the intimidation and peril of despair. The narrative will be delivered through the keynotes, the individual talks, music after each talk, and the panel discussions. Now I would like to introduce the Reverend Byron Brees of the United Church of Stratford, one of the convenience of the symposium for a few words. Byron is the real reason we are here today, willing to continually challenge himself, require others to challenge themselves, and willing to be challenged by others. Byron asked the question and demanded the answer, which resulted in this, and I thank him. I'd also like to introduce the Reverend Gregory Wilson. Gregory is a part-time Vermonter, part-time preacher in Stratford Unitarian Universalist Church. He has a more full-time role in the UU Church in Brevard, Florida. He and his wife Helen were instrumental in, unbeknownst to us at the time, a symposium exploring social justice and climate and actions of people of faith in Florida prior to us convening this conference in February of this year. Gregory's ministry and life have been profoundly changed as he realized the human connections to the effects of climate disruption and he is making those changes be active. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce two members of the steering committee, the Reverends Byron Brees and Gregory Wilson. <laughs> 